guys, welcome back to Wish Trend TV. It's your sister Eunice in the house today. And it's Luisa. Yay! Yay! Welcome back, you guys. We are so excited for this do and don't. But did you see our last do and don't? Because we did a collaboration with Beauty Within and we talked about how to keep your beautiful, youthful, and healthy skin. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out after this video. So today's topic is a little bit more serious. We're going to be talking about atopic dermatitis. And we know there's a lot of parents out there who have have children dealing with atopic dermatitis and who have hurting hearts and concerns for their children going through this really uncomfortable stage and I know the struggle because I actually dealt with atopic dermatitis when I was younger as well and now I just have a small patch mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. so it's a lot better now but I know that struggle so today let's talk about what we can do to help the skin concern yeah this is really really a serious topic because there's not a pinpointed particular pain that you get, right. but you have this unbearable itchiness that just bothers you, that frustrates you, that mm -hmm. stresses you out, and it lasts for the whole day. I, right. I can't imagine because I've never had it before. However, it's like an itchiness that you have mm -hmm. that throughout the whole day you can't get rid of. So right. I could kind of imagine how difficult it may be for you guys. So apparently the treatment methods for atopic dermatitis are actually similar for both adults and children. We'll let you guys know the do's and and don'ts of atopic dermatitis care and if you have any other skincare concerns make sure to search it up on Wish Trend TV and we'll have the answer for you. So atopic dermatitis is actually an uh, immune disorder so we can't really particularly say that it's caused by just one thing. So atopic dermatitis occurs most frequently in infants and sometimes in children and adolescents. Atopic dermatitis in infants usually gets better by the age of 5 to 6, but if they're not given proper treatment or if it's a severe case, then it can carry on to adolescence or even adulthood. So you're right. So there are various of reasons why um, atopic dermatitis starts in your adulthood. So there are four main reasons that causes atopic dermatitis. And the first one is genetic predisposition. So if someone has atopic dermatitis, Mostly other people ask right off the bat, not just this, but if you do have atopic dermatitis, higher chances that someone in your family also has rhinitis and also asthma as well. Second is immunological abnormalities. What I mean by this is in the case of atopic dermatitis, it's our immune cells reacting hypersensitively to allergens in our body. In other words, atopic dermatitis occurs because our immune cells react strangely to the allergens outside of our body. The third cause may be due to environmental factors. So it can be caused by fine dust or it can be caused by air pollution. Sometimes it can be caused by dust mites too. <laughs> and also atopic dermatitis can worsen if you have high usage of antibiotics or even for children or even for adults, if you have mental or emotional stress, this can make it worse. Finally is abnormalities in the skin barrier. Those with atopic dermatitis usually have a weaker skin barrier. Usually the strength of our skin barrier is slightly reduced due to genetic predispositions or environmental factors. This makes your skin very dry because all of the moisture is evaporated away and so allergy causing agents or germs can easily penetrate the skin and cause the skin to be inflamed. Do number one, moisturize. First of all, atopic dermatitis causes inflammation. So it makes your skin itch, it makes your skin dry. So this is like the key point. You guys have to remember that it is an inflammation. So using products that can irritate your skin can worsen atopic dermatitis. That's right. So I'll let you know what ingredients to be careful with when moisturizing for atopic dermatitis. So mineral oil and petroleum such as Vaseline are known to be very good for hyper dry or very dry skin because of its good moisturizing power and its good stability to the skin. However, when it's applied to skin with atopic dermatitis, it can actually be absorbed and cause more skin problems. So make sure to avoid mineral oil and petroleum. That's right. On top of that, it's good to avoid ingredients like alcohol or ethanol because it can make your skin dry. So the main thing, the crucial tip that you have to remember is moisture, moisture, moisture. So a very realistic and easy tip is that after you take a shower or after you bathe, make sure that you moisturize your skin within three minutes. Three minutes because you don't want the moisture on your skin to evaporate. You want to keep it and locked in your skin. So this is a very realistic tip for you guys. The effects of moisturizer wear off after one or two uses. So we recommend you to reapply four to five times a day. 
That sounds like it's a lot, but it's just very necessary, yeah. you know? Very good to hydrate. So, like Eunice mentioned, hydrating and reapplying moisturizer as often as you can is very good for atopic dermatitis care. So even if you are getting the proper treatment, even if you're doing all the rules that you're supposed to in the books, if you're not moisturizing your skin, then it's not gonna happen, guys. So to improve um, atopic dermatitis, moisturizing is the key. You have to remember that you have to reapply moisturizer whenever you feel like your skin is dry. Do number two, consult a specialist. Early treatment of atopic dermatitis is very important and if you start early enough, then it can be treatable. You need to consider the cause and symptoms for each individual in order to find a cure that's fit for them. So make sure to go talk to a specialist and get the correct diagnosis. Continuous care is extremely important so that the symptoms can improve over time. And the most effective way is steroid ointments. Steroid ointments are the most effective treatment when it's prescribed correctly by your doctor. It contains antihistamine with a calming effect. And this is gonna help to reduce that itchiness. And what is the number one symptom for atopic dermatitis? Itchiness! Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you guys, remember that it's not a great or the wisest choice to avoid um, steroid ointment just because you're afraid of the side effects. It's very important that you consult with a doctor or a specialist to know your symptoms and to know the causes and to find the right treatment. Remember that these treatments can be really great to relieve the itchiness or to prevent the itchiness and also for allergic inflammations as well. But be aware that prolonged use of steroid medication can cause skin to shrink, leading to dilated capillaries, and that can also lead to pimples rising on the chest or the face. Therefore, when using steroid medicines, make sure to check the dosage and also the usage period with a professional such as a doctor or pharmacist and make sure to follow their directions thoroughly. Also, avoid unnecessary steroid medications for mild skin irritations. Do number three, make sure that you wear clothing made out of cotton. And one of the most common factors that can cause atopic dermatitis is actually our very clothing. Mm. Yeah, the fabric of our clothing and also the physical touch can <laughs> irritate the skin. So keep that in mind, okay? So itchy knitwear or synthetic fibers can irritate the skin and it can make the rash even worse. So just please remember that when you are going shopping and you know you wanna go buy this and that, please do keep in mind to buy clothes that is cotton because that's gonna also help to irritate or prevent to irritate your skin less because when you're sweating, cotton absorbs the sweat right off the bat so that can lessen the irritation. If you guys don't have any cotton clothes, make sure to at least choose clothes with a soft touch and make sure to choose clothes large enough to allow good ventilation. It's also really important to rinse your clothes thoroughly to make sure that there's no leftover detergent on them. Mm, that I could see, it could cause irritation. Mm. Do number four, cut your nails short. I know it's really hard to ask someone that is currently having atopic dermatitis to not scratch yourself, right? So realistically, if you are gonna do it, and we do ask you not to do it, but if you are gonna do it, it's a wise decision to make if you do cut your fingernails and if you keep it short because that means less irritation to the skin when you're actually scratching it. And please do remember the best way is not to scratch because when you do scratch, oh my god, it does feel good at that very moment. However, if you continuously do it, it's just gonna make it itch even more and it's just gonna continue uh, and make it even worse day by day. That's right guys, long nails can cause skin to peel and it can also cause skin to bleed. This can cause skin damage to become even more severe leading to secondary infections so make sure to keep your nails short. Also, because you might scratch unconsciously when you're going to sleep, it's a good idea to wrap your hands. Do number five take care of your emotional and mental health. To be honest with you guys, for those that are dealing with atopic dermatitis at the moment, when they're seeing this video, they might be really frustrated because that there is no specific advice that can really change or to solve the problem right off the bat. However, did you guys know that mental, emotional stress can really worsen atopic dermatitis? That's right, because even in Korea, we can see that high school seniors often see improvements in their skin after the CSATs, even though they receive the same treatment. This is a clear example of how mental and emotional stress is also a cause and factor of skin atopic dermatitis. 
So it's really difficult because you have to take care of it very differently for every single individual. And the reason why you do have atopic dermatitis may differ for every single person out there. And another thing is, well, if one of the factors is something like environmental factors, like for example, like yellow dust, fine dust in Korea, I think it's really difficult for me to change that. You know, right. I can't change like the weather and things like that. So we do want to let you guys know, just please don't stress. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, mentally, don't stress guys, and it can improve. Let's focus more on the positive side that it is gonna improve with following these amazing tips. Even for me, I realized that when I'm stressed and I focus more on how right. itchy this is, it makes it worse. Right. But if I just try to forget about it and just kind of move on with my day, it becomes a lot better. Mm. So that's a very good tip, Eunice. Don't number one, stay away from irritation. So Eunice, what comes to mind when I talk about irritation? Ah, I think if you talk about irritation, there are so many, but it can be maybe like an irritation from the hands or clothing. It can be because of the sun rays. It can be because of chemical factors. And even if I'm tired, the irritation can come from that tiredness that I have or even fine dust or even emotional or mental stress. So a lot of a lot different of different irritations. Factors. Are you just saying to avoid all those irritations that you just mentioned mm -hmm. and basically moisturize? But also, should we use a moisturizer that's all natural? Right, I think this is a great question because when you say to stay away from chemical irritants, some people might be like, okay, then I'm gonna use everything that is natural and that is okay. However, let's say for example that I use raw aloe, right? That can be irritating for your skin. Mm -hmm. Plus, did you know that it can be even poisonous? Yes, aloe peel can cause allergic reactions. So you do have to keep in mind that even though we say that, you know, everything to moisturize and to use natural things is good, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything is gonna be good for you. Don't too. Make sure to avoid foods that can cause allergic reaction. Atopic dermatitis is an allergy that is seen with children in their early days. It is said that it may be related to foods like soybeans, milk, or even eggs. So please do keep in mind that infants that is younger than 12 months old do take these type of foods. It can cause atopic dermatitis. Many of the allergy that is caused by foods leads to atopic dermatitis. So we do have to remember that you do have to make smart and wise choices if you do want to prevent atopic dermatitis. However, the solution isn't just to stop feeding children eggs or milk or any other foods that can cause allergies. So make sure to consult a specialist about this and figure out what foods to avoid for your children. Don't number three, avoid rapid change in temperature. Atopic dermatitis can be sensitive to humidity and also temperature. So let's say that it's winter and you're somewhere that's outside, it's snowing, it's freezing, it's cold. If you go indoors where it's really hot and you have a quick change of the temperature, this can actually irritate your skin. So such rapid changes in humidity and temperature can actually make our atopic dermatitis even worse because our skin the changes are so quick that it can't really adapt fast. We recommend to set the difference in temperature from outside to inside within 5 degrees and to make sure to use lukewarm water instead of cold water. If you turn on the air conditioner, make sure to ventilate the room for 10 minutes every 1 hour in order to prevent the room from getting too dry. And if you think your skin gets a little sweaty where it folds, make sure to use a fan or an electric fan to cool this area down. So keep your room temperature at 24 degrees Celsius and also humidity level, we do recommend around 50% to 60%. Don't number four, don't take a bath for more than 10 minutes. You may have heard in certain places that taking baths really often can be really bad for atopic dermatitis. However, sanitation is very important for atopic dermatitis. So being clean and sanitation should be one of the key words that you should keep in your mind. Yes, and because sweating and dandruff can cause skin irritation, it can also be a cause for allergies. So make sure you guys bathe correctly. So now we're gonna share with you how you can properly take a bath. Uh, we do recommend that you use a mild soap that is neutral or that is weak or that has low pH. 
and make sure when you're using this soap or the product that you're you know using to you know bathe make sure that you make the soap on your hands first because you want to lessen the irritation you don't want to rub it on your body make sure that you lather it up on your hands and then put on the bubbles make sure that you use your hands instead of using a loofah okay and we do want to recommend that you don't use a soap every single time that you take a bath because if you do it too frequently, this can weaken the skin barrier and also it can make your skin dry. Another important point to remember is that if you take a bath for longer than 10 minutes, then it, it can actually dry out your skin's moisture completely. Also, sweat can irritate atopic dermatitis even more, so we recommend you to take short baths. Don't number five, get rid of dust mites. So as you guys know, there are some house dust mites that could be in your bedding. And if you have atopic dermatitis, this can irritate your skin and cause you to get less sleep. If the symptoms are severe, we do want to recommend that you wash the sheets in high temperature on 70 degrees or so. And after you wash it, make sure that you dry it in the sun. And we do recommend that you do sun dry them for about a day or two. That will be really wonderful. And let's say this, all this is not really possible, then we do recommend that you dust it out. This will also help. Also, make sure to avoid contact with animals or carpet, especially if you have an allergic reaction to animal hair or pollen. Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in until the very end and I hope that you did enjoy the 5 do's and 5 don'ts to take care of atopic dermatitis. I know that it's a really really difficult subject and it can get really stressful but remember in a nutshell, number 1, moisturize and number 2, please don't stress, your emotional and your mental stress can really affect it. And number 3, make sure that you don't irritate your skin and you try to irritate it as less as possible, okay? Alright guys, I know that it is very very, very difficult to improve drastically and we do understand that treating atopic dermatitis is not easy however it can be improved okay i agree and you guys know i've also struggled with it and i've dealt with it and it's gotten better so hopefully it'll get better for you guys as well with these tips if you guys have other questions, make sure to search your skincare questions on Wish Trend TV. Okay guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to Wish Trend TV, and we will be back with the next do and don't next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.